This is 3.7, uh, part two for Math 152. We're gonna keep looking at uh, problems that look like this. So we're gonna evaluate this integral over an infinitely long um, <clears throat> interval. So this integral, so first off, we've got it running from negative infinity to infinity. So really we're gonna break it up. Right, like really we're gonna break it into two pieces where we run it from negative infinity to zero and then from zero to positive infinity. And we do that with limits, right? So I'm gonna say, notice I broke it up into two pieces. Uh, limit as t approaches negative infinity, so from t to zero, and then limit as t approaches infinity from zero to t. And what's nice is I only have uh, really one one integral to do here. I'm just going to, you know, put it into two spots. And just long story short, I would you do a UV substitution into here. Uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I'd let U equals X and DV equal E to the X. And uh, crank it on out and you will end up with, with that, once you go through that, um, that substitution. So let's see what that gives us. Gives us these two pieces here, so we can start uh, plugging in some values and see uh, see what we got. So remember, if either one of these diverges, the whole thing diverges. So let's take a look at this part first. If I plug in my zeros here, I've got zero times one, so zero. My, so I've got negative one minus, and then I've got this limit. So I know that this part as t goes to negative infinity this goes to zero so that part's a zero so really this part i've got to got to focus on right now um, and if i plug that in i get uh, a negative infinity i get basically an infinity times a zero so i'm going to rewrite this as that so that's going to give me an infinity over an infinity. So I'm going to take the derivative of each derivative of t of 1. The derivative of this is this. So that gives me a 1 over infinity. So this also goes to 0. So this first part seems to evaluate to that. Second part, t e to the t minus e to the t. Well, look at this. e to the t uh, infinity, as that goes to infinity, this goes to infinity, this diverges right here. So this whole thing diverges, um, I can't get a value for it. Whew, it's a lot of work. Um, sometimes, you know, after you get your, your stuff written out, start to look and see if you can see like right away something that's going to diverge. And if you can, that might save you from doing a bunch of testing like I just did. All right, so now we're going to look at a different uh, a different type of case in this one we actually like everything seems to be okay but notice this range goes across zero and we're divide that would make us divide by zero so we have a discontinuity here we have a discontinuity at uh, x equals zero so really we're going to split this up uh, into like this range we can't be equal to zero and this range Right, like so. Look for dividing by zero. If your range goes across when you're dividing by zero, you're gonna split it up into two pieces. So uh, I'm gonna say the limit as t approaches zero. That'd be from the negative side, right? Because I'm going from negative one up to zero. Plus, and here I'm going from zero up to one. So I'm gonna approach zero from the right hand side so notice that this is a discontinuity like this graph has an asymptote at x equals zero can't divide by zero so i need to do use some limits to be able to fill those spots in again if one of these uh, diverges the whole thing diverges and if not uh, we're good so let's see derivative uh, i'm sorry integral of one over x cubed is a negative one over two x squared and uh, let's take a look at this well actually i can tell right away this is going to be discontinuous because as t approaches zero this denominator 
gets smaller and smaller, right? As it approaches zero from the left, we're talking about like negative one half, negative one fifth, negative one one hundredth. And if I square that's even bigger, and if I divide by a, a, a smaller and smaller fraction, this thing's gonna tend to infinity. Uh, this is gonna spin off to positive or negative infinity. So again, this diverges. All right, here's another one. So as I take a look at this one, um, my endpoint is fine, two's fine. I'm not dividing by zero, but zero. Natural log of zero is undefined. So let's clean this up. Let's say the limit as t approaches zero from above, because it's zero to positive two of this integral. And then you can do that integral. Um, I would, you could do like a u substitution, a uv substitution for it but you will end up with this. So as we plug in those, uh, those values of two, we've got one half times two squared times the natural log. So that's all plugging in the two, and then uh, that's minus, let that limit run to zero from above. So as t goes to zero, this term goes to zero, right, zero squared. But this term right here, we end up with a, a zero times a negative infinity. So let's use L'Hopital's. We'll clean this up a little bit. And the one half, we'll just pull it out and get it out of the way. If I rewrite this thing that's going to zero as this, right, because t squared, notice how that's the same as that right when you divide by fraction you flip so that is the same as that and then as uh, t goes to zero this goes to an infinity so we've got infinity over infinity so let's go ahead and use L'Hopital again just take the derivative of, of, uh, of each of those and if I clean this up a little bit x over that I get that. These should be t's. I, I, I put x's in there. Sorry. And as t goes to zero, this thing goes to zero. So actually, this whole thing goes to zero. So that means I'm just ended up with this. So four times a half is two. So I have two natural log of two minus one. And that is where this thing converges to. So notice we're running from zero to four. Uh, if I plug a four into here, I'm dividing by zero. So I'm going to need to compensate for that. I'm going to approach a 4 from below. And as you do that integral, um, you can do a u substitution for it. That'll get you there. And uh, let's see, plug a 0 into this. And actually, plugging the 0 in is the second thing that I do, right? Because it's plug in t minus plug in 0. So I have this minus plug in that zero. And if I plug in that zero, so notice this evaluates to four, so minus a negative four, so that's a plus four. And then this, as I let that t run to four uh, from the negative side, like three, 3.9, 3.99, this goes to zero. So it's negative two times the square root of zero, which is zero, zero plus four. So this converges to, uh, to four. Just a couple of things for you to, uh, to realize. Uh, you could work these out with like a squeeze theorem, but uh, both of these go to zero. So those are good limits to know. Um, natural log, I think we might have talked about that last time, but just in case. Um, as, as t approaches zero from the positive side, natural log goes to negative infinity. And actually, let me let me show you why why this is true. Um, we could use something that's called the squeeze theorem. In, in other words, I have this e to the negative x uh, times cosine of x. I know that that the biggest cosine x gets is positive one, and the smallest cosine gets is negative one. So that means that this thing has to be less than or equal to. Uh, e to the negative x times 1, right? Because the biggest cosine x outputs is 1. So this has to be at least that, uh, at most that, I should say. And the smallest this gets is negative 1. So 
I know that this is between those two. Oh, that should be an X, sorry. Right, cosine oscillates between negative one and one, and then they're multiplied by that. So this has to be between these two. And what that means is if, if I take the limit as X goes to infinity of everything here, like these will still, um, these, these relationship will still hold. This is gonna be, get squeezed between those two values. And um, this, and this both go to zero, right? Like, cause this is negative one over e to the x. As x gets bigger, this gets bigger. One divided by bigger and bigger uh, tends towards zero. Same thing over here, one over tends towards zero. So, so, so since these two tend towards zero as x gets really big, and this is in between them, this must also squeeze in and get tended towards zero. So that squeeze theorem gives us those two relationships. So dig on into the practice problems that, uh, that are with this chapter. Send me any questions that you have, post them in the forum, or message me.